But I, I think the two things that I would mention are um, an experience from, for example, my years, um, I had a, quite a long time training as being part of the training team um, on a diploma in counselling at uh, Strathclyde at Jordan Hill. And it was always a tension for me in that setting. Uh, and for more than me, you know, for, for a lot of the people involved in that, in that kind of training. Um, holding the tension between the, the requirements of an institution and the, uh, the, the, the setting and the context for the training and trying to hold the possibility of responding to people's needs in their learning to invite that kind of curiosity and engagement. And it was really tricky in a, in, a, in a university setting. And alongside that experience, I mean, I could talk about that for quite a long time, the, the, the trying to hold that tension and finding it extremely difficult. But alongside that experience, it was really important for me for quite a long time in my own personal development, going to residential, full-on, unstructured groups and finding that that was hugely important in my own development. The experiences of that intense t uh, context for relating. Now, they, they didn't necessarily have a, an educational agenda with them. They were just an unstructured place for meeting and, and, and contact. But it's such a rich environment. So I have these two parts of the kind of um, tension held in qualifications if they're going to end up in educational institutions, but also the rich environment in holding a, an intense residential uh, place for meeting people and being in relationship. And the, 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 the strength of learning that can come out of that has been really important for me. Thank I'm going to stop. For me, it was one of my formative um, moments possibly or transformative moments um was when i was lucky enough and, and it was such an accidental process that i ended up training to become a full-time youth worker in the 60s as a result of a government report saying we ought to have more uh, people working full-time working with young people you know the whole process of social education and i was 22 23 got accepted to do this one-year training course and in the college library, there were just 120 students, fabulous, um, fabulous experience where we spent, we had one guest lecture a week, the rest of the time we were in groups, seminar groups, tutorial groups. So that was a really exciting process because I began to find through that process, I think, my own voice, my own feelings or attitudes or responses. But what I was going to say was in that process in the college library, I, I found some books by an author whose name I then proceeded to forget for seven years, but who talked about unconditionally prizing the other, striving to understand the other as if one were them, um, being authentic in the relationship. And I based my complete five years of full-time youth work in the East End of London on this geezer, you know, using an East End parlance, because I'd forgotten the name. But those books, more than any youth work books, were powerfully influential to me. I then got a job teaching in Jamaica and um, based my teaching, probably naively, but my conventional teaching, or trying to be a teacher after being five years of youth worker, it's not an easy transition. Um, uh, but again, based on those principles of relatedness. And of course, you know that I'm talking about the writings of Rogers. But there was something about uh, Rogers' inherent faith in the wisdom and potential of others that I think underpins the rest of the work I've done in my life, but certainly in terms of the particular context that Dot and I are talking about tonight. And for us, it's, it, it has its currency or its current currency in the supervision courses we're now running. That's the medium through which we really strive to offer um, a real opportunity to the participants of unstructured learning. But of course, they've come because it's about supervision. But we really want to involve them in, well, what is it you'd like to think about? What is it you'd like to learn? What should we, you know? Um, and, and so we start from that principle. Um, 
I was going to say a couple other things. They're now less important because I think I've established something about, in a way, um, for me, where I, uh, those origins have never gone away. You know, and I suppose our, my working life has just given me lots and more, lots of increasing evidence of the power of unstructured situations. Um, and particularly, of course, when they're going well, it's evident. When they're not going well, they can be really hard work and, uh, you know, negative group dynamics and so on. But they have such potential uh, for all of us in which to explore how we, how we relate and what we know and how we can exchange our learning. But there is an explicit agenda in that we come together in that training with a, a shared interest in thinking about supervision. So there, there is something set there. So um, part of the richness for me is that, that, that people with already with a fair bit of experience are coming on this training because they're beginning to think about this new uh, form of relating supervision. So we're we're on a we're on a journey right from the beginning, almost before we meet, because of that that shared intent. But that doesn't necessarily mean we know where we're going. And what's fascinating, I was also reflecting on uh, John. You were talking about the comparison with many educational institutions, and um, I think what's fascinating for me. And, and, and Dot and I, when we've had conversations, when we look back on the notes of the kind of things that the, group, the supervision training groups have explored, the agenda um, or the curriculum we have covered is absolutely enormous. And as Dot says, we are working with fellow professionals. You know, they, they already have experiences perhaps of supervising and of supervision. They have experiences of complex therapeutic working relationships. Um, so um, th this is not a naive group. And having said that, I would also justify that there's such a lot of potential working with children in a similar way, in many ways. What is it they want to learn? Not, is it, not what is it I want to teach? But what at the point I'm wanting to make, and I've begun to lose it, was very much that when we look at our reflections on what we've covered in the supervision courses that has unfolded naturally through group process, I believe we've covered everything that any professionally determined course saying the curriculum must be this. We have more than covered the curriculum, but in a manner and at a pace and in a process with it, which engages people directly and their questions directly, often coming out of huge complex dilemmas. Um, and so it's a very powerful um, learn, personal learning process driven by personal curiosity, personal need. Um, I've said that with quite some passion, but I really believe it. And yet we could, we could stand up to, yes, we covered that, and we covered that, and we covered that. You know, it's, it's extraordinary, the richness of stuff we cover, but it's from this trusting the group that they know what it is they want to learn, that, that people genuinely feel invited in. Yeah. to participate in the climate because it is a joint learning. Dot and I also learn. Yeah. We're not teaching. We yeah. also learn. Yes, we bring some resources and we can respond or people can look at them. And all, but but it, it, it is that encouragement for a joint project. You know, and that's the kind of invitation I hope we, uh, we make well to groups. Yeah. 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 I, I would say that, that my, my, my thinking is going in two directions as I think about that. And one is um, the, the importance of the very initial stages of the creation of that learning environment, like how people arrive, how people are, are, are met right from the initial contact, which um, it, it's about establishing some kind of atmosphere right from the word go. Because it is about contact, the quality of contact that's going to to open up um, to the richness of the resources that each person brings. And, and what Collins just said is, of course, 
my learning is so engaged in that as well. So I am, I mean, I just absolutely find this the most stimulating and enjoyable process. Um, and one of my examples of that that I thought about for talking about tonight was a moment in one of the groups that we've had, one of the supervision learnings of really coming to conceptualize supervision as a as the creation of a space for joint contemplation, for to, to really invite someone to bring whatever they need to to supervision and to be a, a person that sits and we we plough the ground, we dig over the earth, we explore it together in an act of joint contemplation. I'd never had that conceptualization of it before. I'd never had that thought before. And it felt to me that I was leaving with something hugely important to think about and to to absorb and and to expand my own understanding because we we we'd, we'd we'd created that together so there's two things there there's the there's how much i learn as part of this but there's also the attention that's required right from the beginning to set the tone or the atmosphere or the the quality of of relating that we're endeavoring to mm -hmm to create. How, how do you start a group like that? You know, what do you do? Um, you know, I know in other places I've taught, I've got some PowerPoint, I've got some handouts, you know, what? Yeah. So a practical question, I guess. <laughs> Colin, I can, I'm very happy to go. Will I? But I'm, go, on, go, go, go. Well, it's how to start it is, is to say, it is to ask what's around. What is around? Because there won't just be appetite and curiosity. There may also be bits of apprehension and anxiety. And where I where I go with that opening question of what is around? What do you bring? What are your concerns about this process as well as your interest in it in deciding to come to a group like this? Often will start us thinking or as a group about our prior educational experience. That that they're, they're often, in my experience, um, is prior experience of an educational setting around that raises anxiety, fears of being evaluated and judged, of not being good enough, of not fitting, of um, not measuring up to a particular way of, of education being delivered. Often that is around. So it's not only what's your question coming here about wanting what, what's your curiosity about for example training to be a supervisor but what are your own concerns about joining a, co a, a group where this is the stated educational environment and what are your apprehensions and and worries about that yeah yeah because yeah, i guess they're going to be there right at the start as we step into that environment so let's not sail by them and yeah, yeah, and and it's almost like I'm I'm now sitting wondering if that almost has to be invited in and and addressed and made explicit in order for a freer a freer endeavour to begin mm -hmm. to begin that has to be acknowledged if it's there. Yeah, we'll be interested to kind of get some feedback from the chat room. You know, if anybody's got some thoughts about that as a as a certain yeah. place. And... Yeah. There, 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 there were, sorry, Dot. There, there were things you said. Um, there are several things that I, I caught me. There is, there is the warmth of welcome. And and um, I've always liked to think that I, I was welcoming when um, I was running the courses, then you and I have been running the courses. But I think there's been an additional quality of welcome with you as well as people arrive the first morning and it is quite clear they're often quite apprehensive and quite understandably so this is a course I'm committing to for 10 days I don't know anybody I don't know the trainers what the hell will happen uh, they say it's going to be in structured oh my god that's even worse um, yeah. you know so so um, and I suppose it is about trying to create, I mean Rogers talks a lot about it and educators talk about it, but trying to create a climate in which we dare to come out beyond our fear. And of course sometimes what comes out over the duration of a course are deeply buried 
previous negative experiences of learning. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, and sometimes they will pop up on the ninth day or will pop up in people's writing way after the course that, uh, you know, of things that have inhibited them from daring to fully express, well, this is what I'd like to learn now or what I'd like to, or can I tell you this and will you, will you receive it or will you be critical of it? Um, but I think there's something in that welcome. And there's just a couple of other things that I love. Um, I loved it recently when I came across the etymology of the word to educate or education, which I think is educare in Latin, which means to draw out. It's not to shove in, not to put in, but to draw mm -hmm. out. And I just love that. And of course, Martin Buber, the German philosophy, talked about education as contact. So I guess yeah. welcome and real contact but with, I mean, we're talking about, it's easy shorthand to talk about Roger's conditions, but they are very powerful, I believe, as elements of trying to create a, a good enough working climate that the group can really begin to function and choose its, you know, choose where it's going to go, what it's going to bring. And at the same time, I, I don't want to ignore that we actually do bring along two casefuls of DVDs, um, case studies, ethical statements, uh, handouts of all sorts. Um, so we have a lot of resources available, but none of those are imposed upon the group. That they are, but there are resources available for the group to use if, as, and when. And I don't know whether that also replies slightly to the question, John. Uh, you know about how to balance resources and ambiance. I need to say here that Colin has the most fantastic range of resources that he has built up over the time of doing this. So I feel as if I really benefited from that. But I, I have a, an example in my head of, of, of how they came into, they came to life um, in this kind of environment. And it was um, in one of our, 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 our um, sessions with the group, there was a curiosity about different models, different models of, of theoretical models of what supervision can look like. And Colin happens to have a handout which compares various models. So on that day, there was resources there and people could take them away. The next time we met, it came up again and we'd all had a look at these resources and these models. And it just kind of grew a bit organically that we, we kind of got the handouts out and started sort of teasing out, oh, look at this one, and what does that mean, and what what might this be like that? I mean, it was, so it's fairly theoretical stuff, but it was like compare, comparing and contrasting these different models and what they made you think of. And the thing that struck me at that moment was, if I had been asked to do a bit of input as a lecturer on a supervision course on comparing supervision models, I've had, ha I would have had all that fun. <laughs> it's, it's not unadulterated fun, but you know, like that interest and that stimulation of looking at the different models and going, there's a developmental strand there, or there's an educational strand there, or there's something in common here. I'd have had all that enjoyment on my own. I remember saying this at the time, I'd have said, I'd have been sitting here with, um, in my little lonely study with my books all around me and having a grand time thinking through all of this on my own. I enjoyed it so much better when we did it together. It was like a live process of um, uh, what's it like bouncing up against each other, you know, sparking off each other, sparking off each other. Somebody would say something, the thinking was being done by all of us together. And it was so interesting. And it was, of course, so much richer than one brain would would come up with so much more diverse and and the, the perspectives were so much wider so the resources were there but the live wrestling and chewing and mulling over done together is i mean it's fun it's enjoyable it's much more enjoyable than doing it on your own or simply reading this stuff in a dry theoretical way